Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Rita Horner of Synopsys, who's going to talk today about the challenges of multi-die integration in a package. So Rita, what are you seeing as we start putting different die into a package? We've got multiple different types of packaging. We've got 2.5D, 3D, we've got fan outs. And all, each one of these is different. A lot of the packages themselves are different. Um, each one it tends to be unique. We have chiplets on the horizon as well. What sort of issues are you encountering? So the big portion of the IC and design um, system value creation is shifting towards uh, how to integrate all these different dies in one package. Um, whether it's going to be a 2.5D or a 3D and all the different flavors of 2.5D and 3D, it's going to make it very complex and people are, cannot understand what's going on to some extent. But besides that, how do you actually go about doing that? Right now, how do you do the planning? How do you do the exploration phase before knowing what to put in what and in what configurations? Those are the challenges a lot of people are facing. And then which tool do you use to optimally do your planning, do your design, do your implementation, validation. There's so many different point tools in the market. It's unbelievable. It's alphabet soup and people are very conf confused. That's the key is how do you make this actually implementation happen? It's all the same things that we've been dealing with in the past on a single die. Plus now you have other die that potentially can interact with this too, right? That's correct. So. We are bringing more and more information from the board level to one silicon. As semiconductor um, dimensions are allowing us to do higher and higher level of integration, we are effectively sucking in all the functionality of the surrounding um, devices into one package because we are trying to um, have higher levels of integration. We are trying to get uh, lower latency. Um, smaller form factor, lower power, and all of those is creating a different level of complexities and challenges. Okay. So let's dig into this. Sounds good. So Rita, what are we looking at here? So this is an example of cartoon of what I have tried to um, demonstrate what a system looks like, where you have on a printed circuit board, you have lots of devices on one board. But over time, as higher levels of densities are allowing us to integrate, we are able to move all these different pieces and pretty much suck all the information and bring all everything on one board. But as a result, we are growing our die sizes. Now die sizes, as they get almost radical sizes, the yields go down, um, the complexity goes up. Now we are looking at applications such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, 5G that we talk about. All those things are requiring higher bandwidth, higher performance, lower power, lower latency. So they want to bring the memory closer by. At the same time, they're pushing for higher cost saving and of course, faster turnaround time. And some of these chips are actually coming in larger than reticle size too, right? Because they're actually stitching the, the die together in order to make it bigger. That's right. That's where we are going. So effectively, we are looking at packaging technologies that used to be about 30 by 30, 50 by 50, moving 70 by 70 or 75 by 75, moving to 100 by 100 micron, millimeter by millimeter um, dimensions. So we are putting more devices and more larger devices and stitching is another problem, especially when you're talking about silicon interposers to enable the 2.5D application space. Historically, when we looked at advanced packaging, the idea was that we'd be able to mix and match a lot of different things. And to some extent, we're doing that. But most of the logic that's coming in here is still coming in at the most advanced nodes, right? Because they still need that density. You need the density in certain locations. Yes, definitely. Where you have more of a logic integration, where you don't have so much mix, mix signal. So the die disaggregation is happening when you have more mixed signal analog devices that are not so much great in a smaller technology nodes such as five and threes as we move forward, because it's not the density that is required, it's the performance that is required that is more offered in this larger, older technologies. One of the issues that goes on with some of these packages though, is a lot of these are one-offs. So you've got a company that's building the most advanced chip. They don't get enough out of scaling in terms of power and performance. They do get the density, 
but they don't uh, get the benefits that they used to get out of, out of typically scaling. So now they're going into a, a package to get that extra density with an architectural change. So will this eventually go mainstream? Have you got enough pieces together and enough ways to be able to automate this that's, that this is going to now be available to the mainstream chip makers as opposed to just the most advanced chip makers that can afford to do all these iterations? That's a very good question. So what I have discovered by talking to different um, customers and partners that there, you need to really understand the dynamics of how these systems are getting connected together. And if I may share what we are looking at in a system where you have architect, you have the chip designers, package designers, PC board designers are all operating independent of each other, sometimes sequentially in their own silos. But the die level complexities are increased so much that they no longer can operate independent of each other because of the complexity. To your point, if we really want to make these multi die integration to go mainstream, be affordable and also more reliable and more faster turnaround time to get to the market, we need to create a more collaborative environment where all these different discipline individuals can actually work together. From early stages of the design to implementation to validation and even to the manufacturing and if there is a new next generation iteration happening, it'll be nice to have a platform that you can go back to and learn from what decisions you have made to be able to further optimize for the next generation without going back to paper and pencil that a lot of people are using to do their planning and organizing before they start digging in. And then there's no platform to allow all these dif different disciplines to collaborate with each other, to learn from each other. This environment of collaborative environment would allow people to even go back to the drawing board and say, okay, I have to disaggregate my die because it's getting too large. Because I have to disaggregate a die, I have to put additional IO to talk to each other. What type of IO do I need? If I put the IOs in this side of the chip versus that side of the chip, what's the impact of the substrate layer design? What is that means translates to the package and the board level where I put my balls in the package versus my C4 bumps in the substrate or the micro bumps in a die. Do the tools that are here have to be different in terms of what they're looking for? Are you still collecting the same level of parasitics, the same level of uh, this is legal, this is not, or is it a completely different setup? The ideal situation is you have a common unified platform where you can bring all the information into the environment, simulation environment. You could bring the information from the DDR arena, DDR process for that matter of HBM in this example, or the CMOS technology where the CPUs may be sitting and then be able to have enough information brought in to extract the parasitics to your simulation to make sure the wiring that you're doing, the spacing and the width of traces that you're using for your interconnect or the shielding you're doing are gonna be able to meet the performance requirement that you have. So it is no different, but the complexity is getting high. So in past when you did the multi-die in a package, you had very few devices. You had very few traces going between every part. Now with the HBM, you have thousands for one HBM connection. It's very complex. And that's why we are seeing silicon interposers enabling the interconnect because it allows you to find granularity of the width and spaces that are needed for this level of density. So is the flow now complete? I know that the uh, FABs and the, the OSATs have been looking for a, a set of tools for quite some time saying that what they had in the past was not sufficient to, uh, to, to automate all the pieces that went into a, uh, an advanced package. So their flows are there, but it's a piecemeal of a lot of standalone disconnected tools. That's the problem. And what we envision what market needs to make this actually successful, which I keep on hearing over and over again, the current silo tools, the point tools, are running out of bandwidth because those tools are designed only for one technology node at a time. It's not able to integrate multiple technologies at the same time. It doesn't have this capacity to have these large number of databases that needs to be combined. 
So the flows are there. Yes, the fabs have already created some of these flows and have ironed it out, but it consists of slew of lots of tools. It's alphabet soup again. And a lot of them have different data formats going from one platform to another platform. And in order to actually get this product designed and then verified, you have to do so many iterations on and on and with long loop back and cycles before you can actually get something reasonable. And a lot of things are afterthought. So I was gonna actually share with the next slide. Um, we're talking about signal quality. We're talking about power. We're running a lot of signals between these devices. There is a lot of heating, self-heating or heating because you're stacking these things. You're creating stress because you're adding so many devices in this part. Those things need to be addressed. And every one of these type of challenges needs to be addressed by a different tool. It becomes so complex that one tool cannot do it for the most part. Nobody really has figured it out till now. And that stress can come in from things like warpage, uh, pulling on different sides of the chip and, and separating the solder from some of the balls too, right? Yes, and detaching the bumps from the substrate and also the board level effectively. The warpage can be caused by heat when you are overheating one side or the other side, depending on how you're distributing your devices on the board. So all of these things need to be modeled and considered. So you need a modeling tool for thermal. You need a modeling tool for SI. You need a modeling tool. But then it's very complex. You cannot afford going from one tool to another tool. You need to be able to have a cohesive thermal aware environment, signal integrity aware environment to make this thing work. As you're moving your devices around, you know where the heat is gonna be problem. So that's the platform that is required to make these multi-chip um, devices to be successful and be able to get to the production level quickly. Otherwise it's gonna take years and years and you're missing the boat in the next release just because you're trying to figure out where's the, how can I get rid of the heat and still be able to compact everything in the same package. Well, are we getting to the point now where we are adding some consistency into this and predictability in terms of if you develop this chip according to uh, certain rules that, that are within the tools that it will probably yield pretty well and behave uh, properly and as expected out in the market? Yes, to some extent. Um, but every one of these designs are custom. They're unique. And we are adding more complexity to it. So every design is going to be unique and it's got its own challenges. Whether you're going to put the memory in the middle of the sandwich or you're going to put it on the top. If you're going to put the CPU or the GPU on the bottom or the top, then you have to have TSVs here through silicon viewers to connect to the body and to the substrate. Or how do you distribute the heat where you put the device on? So it's still complex. Uh, every design is going to be unique and it's going to have its own challenges. But the techniques are being understood. The challenges are being recognized and the tools are getting in place or the features and functions are getting in place. Again, going back, what I he can keep on hearing is they cannot figure out, every one of these tools have different interfaces. When advanced packaging was first introduced, most people thought this would be simpler because it's basically just uh, at least in the initial ideas, that it would just be a PCB that was tightened up and put into under the same hood. That's not the case, right? That's right. PC board traces are 100 micron width, 100 micron spacing. You cannot afford to have those spacing in the level of the densities that we are seeing people are integrating devices on the same package. You need much finer granularities and much higher levels of density. So yes, when you're putting so many devices that require so many wire interconnect between them, uh, there's no way to have those um, traces and widths that uh, was used at the PC board level or even the pa old package substrate levels. It's not cutting it. That's why we have these new technologies like the silicon interposers, silicon bridges, and all the RDL layers or the organic, much denser, higher quality organic routing that is happening today for these levels of densities. So are we finally going to, going to get to the point where we have one platform that can do all these things? It's, it's always, if it is all these, these different pieces, can we unify this into a flow and, and a set of tools that say, okay, we need to go back and forth. We need to go high level. We need to uh, get very granular with this. Can we do that in the, uh, now? And will we be able to do that more in the future? Yes. 
we have all the knowledge of how to pull this solution together. We have the capability and the features and able to integrate them as we are unifying all these different capabilities, functions in the same database and bringing them together so they can be very closely integrated together to run more efficiently, to generate a more of a DRC aware environment that you can run automation, auto routing without making a lot of mistakes. You can get the ultimate densities. You can do auto shielding when you need them. You are having a DRC aware in addition to power aware or signal integrity aware or thermal aware designed to make these designs more efficiently without having to go from one tool to another tool. Rita Horner, as always, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.